Today's Captain's Blog is made possible entirely through the support of Jason Halverson and dozens of people on Patreon just like you. If you're interested in being a part of this and helping me make more and better videos teaching people about science and technology, check out the links below in the description and see how you can get involved. Thank you. Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop. Today is going to be a ride because today we're going to play with my nuts a lot and an egregious amount of little washers. We have this big ass motor. This is your J2 motor and the first thing you need to make sure is you got the right motor. So there's the label on the end so that you know you have the J2 motor. Each motor is going to have a label like this with a part number. The part number we want here is 23 Hotel Sierra 22 284 or 2804 Delta dash Hotel Gamma 50 dash Alpha Romeo 3. That's your part number 23HS22 dash 2804D dash HG50 dash AR3. That's your part. Once you got that, you're off to a good start. You're also going to need a lot of nuts and bolts and stuff as we go along. I'm going to call out the nuts and bolts as we hit each step, so we're going to take this one step at a time. If you're at this step in building your robot, it's really a good idea to watch this entire video first, and then you'll have all the parts, you'll have everything you need ready to go, because you're going to need, you're going to need four different wrenches. This is a big step, so watch the entire video first, and then get all your stuff together as you go and then watch it again and actually build your thing. This is not an, this isn't like a super difficult step, but there's a lot of parts along the way. So take your time. Don't be intimidated. You can do this, but just take your time. Don't freak out. Okay. We're going to do this together. So you're going to start with this big expensive stepper motor setup. Now, this is the actual motor here on the back end, the part that the wires go into. This is the actual motor. This is a gear drive, which is why if you, if you turn the back, the front moves a lot slower, okay? For, for like every turn you make back here, this is going to move a fraction of a turn. In fact, it'll probably be like several turns back here to one turn here. What this is doing is trading speed for torque. This end won't move nearly as fast, but it'll have a hell of a lot more oomph behind it. So that's, that's trading speed on this end for torque on this end. The problem is we have to fit this in the J2 motor mount, and the J2 motor mount is very specifically sized to fit around here, but you gotta get, you gotta get past this. So what we're gonna begin by doing is taking this plate off. So this whole process begins in taking this plate off and we want to do that in such a way where we don't screw it up. So make sure you have the right end of the motor. It's the end with the round part, not the square part. This is the motor, this is the gearbox. We're going to take off the front cover, which will include the bearing assembly, to the gearbox. So as we do this, it's important to keep in mind, inside of here is filled with lots of little gears. You don't want them all to fall out. That would suck. If it does, it isn't the end of the world. You can get them back in. But we want to not just jump in screwing it up like that. So we're going to begin by taking off the four M4 cap screws and their lock washers from the head of the J2 gear motor. So these are M4s, which means you go in there, of course, since it's an M4 bolt, it's a three millimeter wrench. And we're just going to take those right out. So I'm going to break them all loose first. And once they're loose, we're going to spin them right out. Now these are going to be bolts with lock washers and if we're lucky, it'll all come out as one. Try and hook it on the way out like that. And keep these because they're going back on there. In fact, I'm going to keep the lock washers right on them. All right, so now we're going to take the next one off. And I'm just going to work right the way around. Okay, so we're going to take you off next. 
And once you break them loose, they come right out. So get that out and then kind of hook in there, drag along the side. And if you're lucky, you'll catch the lock washer on the way out. And then run that up the shaft and set it aside. So now we're down to two. This is the point where you want to keep a firm grip on this and make sure that it doesn't just fall apart. There's no springs or anything in there, so you don't have to worry about just like flying apart. But we want to make sure that this all stays together as we go. Okay, last one. Set my wrench down. Come on, there we go. Okay, we got the lock washer. And we're gonna set that down all together. All right, so now we gotta remove this and carefully, like we're gonna, we're gonna get the shaft and the whole front end and the bearing. So we're just gonna carefully slide it off. And you can see we've, we've got the carrier here. And that's all one piece in the bearing. And we've knocked one of the gears out of position. So we're gonna, we're gonna gently drop that back where it wants to be. And that may not perfectly line up where we want, but we'll worry about that later on. It looks pretty good. It, the holes in the center of those have to fit the pins on the end of this shaft. Okay, step one complete, take a breath. You're doing a good job. Next step, you're gonna wanna grab this. And you're gonna wanna have it facing this way. So it should look like that. It's angled, so it, you know you could have it like that or like that, but you wanna have it like this with the motor behind it. And we're gonna bring the motor right up through it. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the motor wires on the back here are facing to the right. Okay, so we're gonna install the J2 motor mount over the J2 motor gearbox housing like this with the motor wires facing off to the right. So this, it's gonna come on there and it's gonna go right over the thing and it should just slide right on. Okay, doesn't matter where you end up in there because it can only, I can't really move this around so much, but it can only go that far. But that's, that's what you're looking for with the angle off to the right and the motors, the motor wires coming off to the right. Okay, so that's what you're going for. We're cool so far. So now we got to put our cover back on it and I'm going to hope I'm still aligned. If we're not, then I'll show you how to realign them. But basically, if, if you screw up and when you take this apart, all these pieces like fall out, these will not, you can't like shove them around in here because they're engaged to the center drive, which is coming off the motor and engaged in the ring gear out here. These are called the planet gears. This is actually called the sun gear. If you're ever wondering, that's why this is called a planetary gear drive because the planets orbit the sun. But you won't be able to move these in here. Well, you can, you can move all three by turning the gear drive. And there's actually a couple stages in that planetary gear drive as I just learned because there's already a gear reduction getting to this far. That'd be a fun thing to take apart. But if, you, if these fall out, you can put them back in, but you gotta, you gotta take it out, move it, and then slide it back in because you gotta get them to line up with that. Now let's see how lucky or unlucky I got and if mine will slide in. Yep, I'm not getting it. Question is, which one's off? And I'm going to guess something that'll grab that better. 
I think this one's off, maybe by one tooth. So if you screw it up, here's how you undo it. I'm going to go over one tooth. That looks better. Oh, it's so close. It's hard because see how you guys can't really see in there? Yeah, neither can I, and I'm the guy doing it. Now, I wonder... I have an idea, and this is either a really good idea or a really stupid-ass idea, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to take the planets out, all three of them, and I'm going to put them on these pins. Like that. On the planetary gear retaining pins or alignment pins or whatever. So I think at this point I can just put this in here but I may have to spin these as I go but now I know they're in the right orientation. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I've never done this before but let's find out. You just spin it until you get all the planets to align. Okay so now I'm engaged in the outer ring gear. And I should be, able, there we go, boom, that actually works. And if you get it right, you'll be able to turn this, but you won't be able to turn this unless you really reef on it. And don't really reef on it because you'll break something. All right, so now all I got to do is align my holes here, these holes, down into the assembly. And we're going to reinstall our four bolts and their associated lock washers. Do this gently, make sure not to cross thread. So we're going to run it all the way down and then spin it backwards and then start threading it in. Okay, bolt mitt rules apply. Don't put them in all the way. Just tighten them in till you get near the bottom. So back till you get the click and then forward. All the way down and then back a turn or a half turn. Whatever makes you happy, whatever you're comfortable with. And back a little bit. Find my fourth one here. Back till you get the big click and then forward. Now this is the last one so we can run this one all the way home. Tighten that one down. All right, we're good. Now we'll line this back up. Now we want to make sure it's really important from the front. See the angle of our piece? The bottom goes to the right. The motor wires go to the right. Everything goes to the right. And that's the problem with America. All right, cool. So we got that sorted. <clears throat> now take a breath. Find your center and relax. You're sitting comfortably and you're feeling fine. Also, we're done with the scary part. We got all the little tiny bits back together, so we're gonna be all right. Now, the next step is easy. We wanna hand turn the rear motor shaft until the main shaft keyway is facing upward, okay? So right now, our keyway is heading off. Well, I'll leave that under because it really shows it well. So we wanna turn the shaft in the back and turn it in the direction you want it to go but you want this keyway to be pointing straight up. Okay, and that also proves to us that all of our little planetary gears are working right and everything's kosher in there. All right, so that's, that's pretty good. All right, so now you need to remove and replace the factory screws. We're actually gonna separate the motor and gearbox and put in new screws and use the new screws to mount everything to the motor mount. Hang on. 
take a look here. We're going to spin this around to the side. And there are M4 screws right here. Okay. I'm engaged in the screw. And we're going to take it out. We're going to do this one at a time. Don't take all four out. Just take one of the factory M4 screws out. And it'll have a little lock washer with it. And we're going to set that aside. In your kit, you're going to have some M4 by 35 pan head screws. These are the, the Phillips pan head screws. And that's 35 millimeters. They're really easy to spot because they stick out like a sore thumb because they're really long screws. They're 35 millimeters long. And that's measured from under the head down to the tip. Now you're going to use this and replace the original bolt with this. So we're going to run this in through here in the original hole. So we got to move this down. We're going to wiggle that down the thing and we're going to run this in and this is actually going to screw into place. Oh, but you got to use a Phillips head on it. I'm smart, you can tell. So we're going to run this bolt all the way down. Now I'm going to stop right there, right when I hit the line there, okay? In fact, we'll, we'll come right up on it. Okay, I'm going to stop when I hit that line because we have to add some flavor here. You got a whole bag full of little washers. These are M4 washers. Divide them up into piles. You're going to need four piles of half a dozen washers. Now, I'm putting mine on so they all face the same direction with the crowns up. And then slide six of them over the end of your bolt. Okay, you should have six washers on there. You can even count mine. There you go, six washers. And then slide those all the way up and then continue running this screw down or bolt. Is it a bolt or a screw? And who gets to determine that? What's the difference between a bolt and a screw? There's your trivia question for the day. All right, now as you take the little bolts out of it, don't throw those away. You're going to need one later on, but just save all of them for now. So now that we know the process for swapping the bolts out, do the others one at a time. And as you swing this around, try and keep this, this part pointing the right direction, but if you lose it, I'll get you back. It'll be okay. And we're going to run that all the way down till we hit the line. And then we'll dump half a dozen washers on there. Now realize this, this bolt is threaded into this part. There's no nut on here at this point. So it'll hold itself in position really well. And we just bring that all the way down and tighten it. There's two done. Take our M4 socket head cap screw out. Run our big pan head screw on in. Install our full stack of washers. And take our screw all the way down. The reason I do it with the screw out there is because it just gives me a little more access on this end, especially if you want to try doing all six at once. If you got to do them one at a time, that's okay. You do what works for you. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You develop your own mojo. I believe in you. You're allowed to have your own artistic interpretation of how you build your robot.
and run that right down. And then finish tightening up our screw. And that's the fourth one. Nice and tight. Okay, so we've got all four on there. Now, orientation check. Our wires come off this side of the motor. So, we want our motor facing like that. The angle going off down and to the right, and the wires coming off to the right. And once you've got it in that perfect position, you want to slide the motor mount plate, which has four holes in it, down over your M37 or M35 screws. Okay, so you've got you've installed your four M35 screws, each with six washers. These are tight, and then you slide this down over them. And once I've got everything down right where I want it, I'm going to take a, a big screwdriver and really make sure these are all good and tight. I'm not over tightening them, but I'm just making sure that those aren't going anywhere in the near future. Okay, you've got, it's starting to look like a whole assembly here. So now, out of your giant bag of washers, you should have four washers left. And in the same bag, you probably found some M4 nuts. So let's put one washer on each thing and one nut on each. All right, so put your nuts on each with one washer. I'm gonna flip that over. It's much more stable now that we've got the plate down and everything tight. Parts aren't as likely to just fall off. Okay, that's nice and tight. We made a thing, look at that, that's cool looking. All right, so at this point, you're going to need to find your flathead M6 by 18 countersunk bolts. You'll have three of them in your kit because we're gonna do something awesome. We get to put this whole thing on the side of the robot now. I'm pretty excited about this. So you've still got your four motor bolts, set those aside. Because the next step is going to be, we're going to come right up into our robot. And we're going to take the condom off. Now you've got your key installed. Okay, so inside our shaft, we've got our keyway, and the keyway points in the long axis of the arm. So swing the arm vertical so your keyway is pointing up. And this keyway is pointing up here. And we're going to slide that right in to the receiving socket. Uh, that could be a rather tight fit. Mine is. So I'm going to grab a gentle persuader to kind of help that in there. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to try the gentle way first. I've got a, a nylon-faced hammer. And we're just going to tap that on in there and see if that'll do it. As we can see, by looking down here, we've got about an inch to go. Okay, that's not doing it as, as readily as I'd like. So I'm gonna step up to the smallest piece of wood I happen to have laying around, a two by four. Now I'm not putting this on the pin. I don't wanna stress the bearings, I'm just out here, I'm just going to lovingly tap that and try and send it home. This is where having a second person in the shop would be really, really cool at the moment. 
I'm dumb. Let's try this. Let's lay it down on its side. I want to support that with something. All right. Hey, that's a way tinier piece of wood. That's what I need. Okay. So we're going to set our big 2x4 under here. Now I'll put the 2x4 right under the corner of the arm, right there. And I'm going to move the arm over this way because I don't want to smack that thing there. And we're just going to Uh, it's working way better. Yep, yep, we're doing great. You're doing fine, kid. Just light taps. You don't want to you don't want to wail on it and just slam it in there. Now I'm going to bring this back and line it up. Cuz once we're there, we're there. And we don't want to be too there. We want to sneak up on it and just gently engage. I really hope you guys can see this very well. This is a horrible thing to try and get on camera. So just, just light little taps and ease that in there. I'm still about a sixteenth of an inch away. So I'm going to run these in, <clears throat> and these will handle my indexing. So these are the three M6 by 8 screws. 18, sorry, M M6 by 18 screws. And we're just going to put those in super loose, just enough to snug us down and hold position. Because if this is too close, we're going to have different problems. So... That's in, that's in. If it's too far apart and we bind it down, it's going to hold everything at a weird angle. So you don't want to put any tension on these yet. You just want them down, not tight. And then ease that in. Oh, yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. All right. Now we're just kissing it. So we can tighten these down. All right, guys. Now we'll stand that back up. And we didn't damage anything because we didn't wail on it. As long as you're gentle, it's okay to make use of a hammer for this, but you gotta, you gotta be careful not to wail on it. And at this point, if you turn this, You'll see the arm move quite a bit. Let me, let me show you. Tiny little turn on the bottom. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's my Carl Sagan impersonation. Whoop, whoop. Look at that. We got a moving robot part. That's super cool. And because you have a long torque arm here, if you move this, and only do this very slowly, you can actually move the motor on there. So now we got two axes on our robot. All right, so remember the J2 tension ring set? This whole thing out here, our big cam thing? We got to take a look down in this gap. That's, that's an, import, an important place to see. I'm going to spin this whole thing around so you guys can really see in there. This gap, you want to make sure that there's about a millimeter between the J2 gearbox assembly, uh, the, the motor housing, and the J2 tension ring. Like this whole thing. You want to have about a millimeter gap. And if you did everything like we've done so far, if you followed along and everything worked for you, then that's about where you should end up. You should have about a millimeter down in there, maybe two, but it'll all line up and you're good and square. If you don't, if you have any problems, if this is too close, you can add another M4 washer between the J2 mounting plate and the J2 motor on the big back here on the 35 millimeter bolts. Okay, you can add another washer back here and that'll pull this whole thing back that way one washer thickness, which is about a millimeter-ish. 
So that's how, you, that's how you should end up. All right, so the last thing, you should have this big ass screw. This is an M6 by 20. M6, that's one of the biggest screws we've used so far. So your M6 by 20 goes up here in the top in that hole, okay? Now when you install this, which you'll need a five millimeter driver to do, be gentle and don't over tighten this, okay? This needs to be just snug enough to hold things in position. It really, this, this screw doesn't do a whole lot. All this is doing is locating the gearbox radially. So if you over tighten it, it's not gonna get you anything because these, these bolts are already doing a hell of a lot. But what it can do is crush that gearbox. And remember the ring gear we saw in there? You'll fuck it up. So be careful tightening this down. It should be, should be nice and snug, but that's it. Okay, so you're gonna go down, this, this is a good indicator. You're gonna go down just fingertip tight plus a quarter turn, not even, not even a quarter turn. You'll, you'll feel it tighten up, then you're cool. All right, one last step. Now that we've got our arms sticking straight up, all right, a couple videos ago, we put that little grub screw, I think it was a M3 or M4 by 10. We started it in the hole, but we didn't run it in all the way. This is where we're gonna run it in all the way. And it's located down that little hole on top. So you drop and you're only gonna catch it if this is pointing straight up. So if this moves off to the side, the screw is down in there, but the screw is attached to the spindle down inside here. So you gotta find it. And it only works if, if like the stars are aligned. So I'm actually gonna move this over here where I can see the damn thing. Yep, I can see it, it's in there. And then we drop our tool down in. I just hope I can get it with the T-handle. That may be a wrong size. I think that that's totally the wrong size. I have a sneaking suspicion it's a little 1.5, not a 2. Because it's really tiny. Instantly drops right in, feels perfect. It's a 1.5 and it's way down in there. And my ball head won't engage it properly. And I got a good ball head, it's a weird. But yeah, so you're gonna need a long non-ball head, uh, 1.5 millimeter to get in there. So I'm gonna have to get a different tool for that, but I'll dig one up. At this point, we got it guys. That whole assembly, which is massive. There's a lot of shit going on there. There's a lot of steps involved there. That was a job, but it's so cool looking. Like we just did pretty much the entirety of J2 in one big single video. So I'm sorry the video took so long. I know that was a hell of a ride, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. I. I love it. This is really neat. It's sexy as fuck. This is so cool. So J2 is built. We made a thing. And that is the entirety of this episode. I want to thank all of you guys for hanging out on this long ride. I appreciate it. And if you're into stuff like this, if you're into building robots and making cool shit, check out the Discord. The link is below in the description. It's full of people just like you. Guys that just want to make cool shit, Put it on the internet. That is what this is all about. And you're absolutely invited. So check out the Discord. Links are below in the description. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden and you're not. And as always, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Project Archie, episode 16, take one.